Welcome to Urban Gaming and today I have a bit of a special thing. You can see here a collection of conversion miniatures that I've done. I've got everything from uh, Italian Ascari, uh, Soviet VDV, this one was actually featured on Warlord's website. I've got my South African Bofors gun that I've made from an Australian Bofors gun. Um, this crew member in particular was a pain to convert because that's a legs swap, a head swap, an arm swap, lots of stuff there. My squad of Hungarian border troops with their little tassels taken from the fezzes in the SS kit. And then a little bit of sci-fi magic, my uh, Sydney FC themed orc truck from De Cove, and uh, a couple of Armageddon Steel Legion troopers. And I think that my little uh, show of conversion shows off uh, from the simplest conversion of literally just putting a backpack on a guy to the full extreme of every part of this guy came from a different kit. You can do a lot of things with conversions. Now, why am I talking conversions? Well, SLC Scale History, who is, I think, a fan of my channel. I'm not sure. He's definitely a fan of my Instagram. Has put out a challenge for kit bashing and conversions. And I've got one in mind. So, I've got all these sprues here. And the plan is to make some Ukrainian resistance. Now, the Ukrainian resistance has a bit of an interesting history in the Second World War where they kind of helped the bad guys and fought against the bad guys and were the bad guys um, at various different points. So, there's some interesting things to do here. So what have I got? I've picked up basically all these random sprues I could find. So I've got some Russian Winter, I think this is SS, um, I think this one is Russian Summer Uniforms, um, I've got, I think this is some Blitzkrieg stuff. A Russian, uh, what do you call this, weapon sprue with a couple of moist nuggets on it. Uh, I've got from statuesque miniatures, some female heads. Um, and we're just going to kind of make an officer and a sniper team is kind of the plan for today. So, yeah. Okay, so here are the parts we're going to work with. We've got uh, from the SS kit, we've got the main body. I'm going to use this for the torso. I've got an arm with an SMG and an arm holding some paper, as well as some magazines for his SMG. From the Russian winter kit, I've got this Ushanka head. And then from the Russian standard kit, I've got this body, which we're going to use the legs from. So let's put together our Ukrainian lieutenant. So the first thing I've done is amputate the torso that I'm going to use. The reason for this is, as you can kind of see, German tunics are a bit longer, especially because this is a camo tunic. So now I can see where I need to amputate these Russian legs. And the whole reason I'm going to do this one first as well is it means that because I'm going to have different legs and different pants and whatnot, I'm going to have a slightly different pose. And so I need to make sure that this pose is going to work with these bits before I stick them on. So he's now glued to the base. And I've done a little bit of cutting here around the neck as I've realized that, well, he had this little scarf thing there, which I've gotten rid of. Um, and the Russian heads seem to be slightly bigger than the SS heads, which is interesting because I've never really had that issue before. I'm now going to put on his SMG arm because it's got the little strap that needs to go around. Okay, and that's the lieutenant finished. I did have to um, switch the head and the arm because it turns out the SMG got in the way of both of them. The strap meant I couldn't put on the Ashanka with the um, stretched out side bits. And the barrel meant he couldn't be reading his paper. But he's kind of advancing, charging his men on, and he's still got that Ushanka that I wanted. So that's the lieutenant done. And now I'm going to get on to the sniper team. Now for the sniper itself, it's a quite simple kit. It's almost just entirely we're just building a normal Russian sniper. I've added in a German bread bag um, and the female head. Uh, so this will be a quite easy put together, so we'll do that one quickly. 
Okay, now the sniper herself is done. Time to do the spotter. Now you may be wondering, why is she on a 25mm base on a 40mm base? And there's something I actually kind of want to try here. And seeing as I'm making a conversion, might as well do it on this model, hey? In 2nd edition bolt action, um, high explosive templates really matter. And so whilst I've always based my sniper teams on 40 mils, technically they should be, by the rules, on 225 mils, because that's how it applies when they get hit by high explosive. So the idea is the spot is on a 25 mil, the tier or whatever, right? So if, I mean, any explosion that hits her will hit him. That's just how the radiuses work, right? But once she becomes a single man team, like when the spotter dies, actually her base should only be this large, so she can only get hit there. Um, and so that's kind of the idea I've gone for. Okay, so for the last guy, I've gone ahead and found an Africa core kind of kneeling down. Now, the cool thing about the Africa core is that I can, this will focus at all, is because um, he's got these nice long pants on, I can just kind of paint them as jeans or trousers or something. Um, so that's kind of the idea I'm going to go for there. We got a Soviet helmet, the S, the Sh 40 or Sh 36, something like that. And then we've got some arms, and we're going to be doing some hand swaps because I want him to have this little pistol. Um, and I've got, you know, pistol arms for the Soviets, and I've got a pointing arm for the Soviets. But unfortunately, as you can kind of see, the arms for the Soviets are a lot thinner than the arms for the German kit. But, and they've got different cuffs, but the hands are roughly the same size. So we're going to be doing some hand swaps there as well. And there we are. Uh, he's done and on and while I was looking around in my bits box I found a flag and you don't see a lot of flags in World War II But I thought who else would have a flag but a bunch of nationalist partisans So I gave the officer a flag to help differentiate him as an officer. So that'll be fun All right a little bit of outside time now because we've grabbed our can of grace here sprayed up some orky boys but also Sprayed up our partisans excuse the wind they are sprayed, so now it is time to paint them. Tip that I learned from SLC on how to paint infantry quickly. I've got this mug. It is full of uh, quick shade Ukrainian resistance. So what I'll do is I'll just grab both the models and I'll just dunk and then pull them out and they're done. So let's have a look at them. So we've got the officer who's all done up. Here he is. We got the little uh, Ukrainian resistance flag, um, which in times of war is red and black, is my understanding of Ukrainian culture, um, because the flag normally represents, uh, the yellow represents the wheat and the, the blue represents the sky uh, at daytime, and then this represents it at nighttime, right? Because you've got the sunset, the blood red sunset, and then the black ground because you can't see anything because it's dark. I think I could be wrong. The trizob or trizob or however you say the national symbol of Ukraine. Apologies, any Ukrainians who are listening. Um, Slava Ukraini. Uh, yeah, however you say that is unique to the O U N um, because it has the sword in it instead. So this is the officer. He's got a German uh, winter camo jacket. He's got some Soviet winter pants, some nice black boots, carrying the flag, got an SMG, and uh, Ushanka that I've cut the uh, Red Army insignia off of. And uh, the sniper team. Now, I had a little bit of fun with these ones because the woman lying down, her great coat actually kind of looks a little bit like a dress. And so I looked up traditional Ukraine. Oh, if I can zoom in instead of zooming out. There we go. So I looked up traditional Ukrainian dresses and I did this. The only difference is she's meant to have like a blue sash, but I'm like, well, she didn't put the sash on because she instead grabbed a military harness. And so she's in traditional Ukrainian dress on the sleeves is kind of meant to be um, roses is what it seemed to be like a, a thing that had a lot of. Again, I'm not an expert on Ukraine. If you're a Ukrainian um, and you'd like to tell me about your culture, please tell me because I'd love to know more. Now, from the top, you can kind of see where that 25 mil base is, which is what I was kind of going for a little bit there. Um, 
yeah, and then the spotter, okay, lift him up. He's got a Soviet helmet, which he's painted a Ukrainian flag on. Now, the Ukrainian resistance wore German-ish kind of uniforms, um, but they had different rank markings, and so he's got a Ukrainian rank marking there in red. I don't know if they had jeans in the Ukrainian SSR or Galatia or the Polish parts of Ukraine or whatever. Um, but this guy's got a pair of jeans, and if he doesn't have jeans, he's just got blue pants. <laughs> I wanted to mix that military shirt with civilian kind of clothing. And I think with this this unit here, I kind of highlight a lot that with painting, you can convert with painting as well as with actual modeling. Um, yeah, and then so the sniper lady, she's just got her helmet to the side there. Doesn't really go with her outfit, so she took it off to shoot <laughs> or something, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are my Ukrainians for SLC History's competition. I may not have a, a voice that's as sexy as his, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. Uh, please pop over to SLC, check out his content. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say, really. Thanks for watching.